Hello, this is David Harper, Bionic Turtle, with a quick look at normal variables. And this is a typical application in finance. So an FRM candidate wants to know this. I'll put the spreadsheet up at the website. What I've got here is a density plot of the normal distribution. And we know it's not practical. We know that asset returns really have fat tails, but it's a good place to start learning. So here's the normal distribution. One of the best things about the normal distribution is we only need two parameters to fully characterize it, the first and second moments. So in my plot here of some hypothetical asset return, I'm assuming a mean of 12% and a standard deviation of 20%. So that means that the mean of the distribution here is 12% and my expected return on the asset is 12%. Then I can use that to ask a probabilistic question. For example, if this normal distribution does roughly approximate or characterize my asset returns, what's the probability I will experience a loss? And graphically, that's the same as asking, what's the probability that we'll end up on a random sample over here to the left of this line at zero? That's the area under the curve right here as a percentage of the total area under the curve. So if X is zero, then I can do a, I can transform that acts into a standard normal variable by taking my x, subtracting the mean, and dividing by the standard deviation. I get negative 0.6. That simply means that if we start here at the mean of 12%, to get to zero, we are going to go left of mean by 0.6 standard deviations. Gets us to zero. So that is a typically characterized with a Z, and now we can use that transformed standard normal variable to compute the probability that will end up over here to the left of this. And in Excel, we can just use the norm s dist function. So this would be just like using the lookup table in the back of a statistics book. The only thing we need to give norm s dist is that Z value, in other words, negative 6 standard deviations or st 0.6 standard deviations to left of mean gives us 27.4. That tells us that 27.4% of the total area into the curve is here to the left. So if that's a random variable, that's the likelihood we're going to end, end up over here with a loss. Now I didn't need to transform the standard normal. I didn't need to transform into a standard normal variable. I could just use norm dist without the s. It was that s that signified we're using a transformed standard normal variable. If I don't use the S, then I can just give it, give the norm dist function first the X we're going to analyze or look up, then the mean of 12%, then the standard deviation of 20%, and then a toggle where we want to say true to indicate we're dealing with a cumulative distribution. And you can see we get 27.4%, same result. The only difference being here we use norm s dist with an s meaning that we're going to give it, we're going to give this function a transformed into a standard normal variable. And here we just use norm dist without the s meaning we're not transforming it into a standard normal variable. Now I can, one last thing, I can look at this from the other direction, which is to say, I can ask myself the question, where is the point on the curve such that I would not expect to do worse than that 95% of the time? So maybe that's somewhere over here, where I have 95% of the area into the curve is here, 5% is here, and that would tell me that that's the loss that I do not expect to exceed, at least with a confidence of 95% of the time. A uh, confidence of 95%, 95% of the time. Well, if 95% is my input, then I can use the norm inv function. That gives me the inverse of the standard normal cumulative distribution function. Well, I forgot the s, norm s inv. And that takes as its parameter the 95%, giving me 1.645, which tells me that if I start at the mean and go to the left, 1.645. Five standard deviations, I'm going to get here a point where 95% is here, 5% is here. Where is that point? Well, I just need to unpack the transformed standard normal variable by taking my mean, subtracting 1.645 multiplied by the standard deviations, and that gets me negative 20.9%. It's going to be over here somewhere. 
And so that tells me that if there's a random variable, 95% of the time I expect to go over here. So I have, I can say with 95% confidence, my losses are not going to exceed this 20.9%. So we can also call that a value at risk. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. I hope this was helpful.